Hey guys, what's up? Welcome again to the shop. Today I have my 1995 GT mountain bike here again and I wanted to tell you what I've done since my last video. The things I've had to do, the things I've done with the bike because as you might have noticed on that other video, it was kind of a light restoration. I don't even know if you could really get, get away with calling that a restoration. It was more like kind of a fix up and, and just um, freshen up you could say. So there were some things I didn't do and I ended up having to do. The very first one was, was the chain. See, I didn't know it at the time, but that chain was totally shot, and I do have a chain tool. Anyway, I do have one of these park tool chain checking tools, but I simply didn't think to use it that day. Then I remembered that I also had a 6, 7, 8, I think a 6, 7, 8 speed chain, whatever thickness that is, I don't remember off the top of my head. I remembered that uh, I had one of those chains. I'm so cheap, I don't want to spend extra money. I remember that I had that chain from that garbage bike a few videos back, more than a few videos back. So I grabbed that chain, checked it with the chain tool, and to my surprise, it was actually in specification. So sure enough, I cleaned it up, put it on the bike, and it's worked perfect. This is still the same chain. Let me know in the comments if you think that's kind of stupid. Like, should I have actually used that rusty old chain? I don't know, could there be something actually wrong with it that I can't see now after cleaning it up? Let me know in the comments. Okay, so, that's the chain you see here. It's actually working perfectly fine, shifting fine, and in fact, yesterday I went on a 50 kilometer, 800 meter climbing gravel ride through a lot of muddy, muddy terrain, a lot of everything, ups and downs, and everything worked fine. I had to step on the pedals quite a number of times to get up some of these steep parts, Nothing broke, nothing happened, so seems to be fine. Then I realized that the brake pads that I had on it were also in pretty terrible condition. The whole time I had heard kind of like a squeaking sound, but I thought maybe it's because the bike hasn't been ridden in a long time, maybe because the, the wheel itself wasn't that clean, maybe the surface was a bit dirty, so I just kind of ignored it, frankly. But it just got, it just seemed to be so bad and it wasn't getting any better. I decided to go ahead and stop in at my local hardware store, especially before that ride I was telling you about, which was coming up. I decided to stop in the hardware store and see if I could grab some new pads. And sure enough, new pads were only about four bucks a set, so I went ahead and got two sets and replaced the front and the back. So now it sounds much, much better. No squeaking. They're working really good. They're totally silent. That's good. What else did I do since uh, you saw the bike last? Well, you may notice I have this old uh, B-Twin bike bag on here. Again, that's because I was doing that uh, gravel ride. Right now it's empty because uh, I hosed the bike off and I uh, got it kind of everything wet inside, so I had to take it out to dry. So I put the, this bag on. That served really well. I was able to put some tools and, and spare tire and stuff like that on. I didn't have to carry anything on my back, which was nice. Uh, oh, this is a pretty big one. I think I'm starting to become a fan of these uh, carbon fiber saddles. Now this one is almost exactly the same, in fact it is exactly the same as the one that I have uh, reviewed in one of my other videos, except for the graphics are a little bit different, this is more of a glossy finish as well. And I didn't pick this out, a friend of mine happened to have this and he said that uh, he didn't like it and I could have it, so this was a freebie. And uh, I used it so for my, it was about a two and a half hour, no, more than two, two hour, 45 minute ride um, yesterday, and it absolutely was fine. It was really no problem. So I'm actually starting to like these uh, hard carbon fiber saddles. Next thing, following back from that, I did purchase, actually, I didn't purchase, I, well, okay, I purchased it, but I purchased it a long time ago. This is just one of these uh, really cheap mud guards that you can throw on the back. I think it helped quite a bit. I did use that yesterday. Uh, what else can I say? That's about it. Oh, I did add this uh, bike computer. Uh, this is going to come up in an upcoming video, a full review, but this is basically a, a bike computer the Shinrin company sent me to review. So I got to try that yesterday on that uh, rather big ride. I'm calling it a big ride. I know it doesn't sound that big, 50 kilometers and 800 meters, but it was tough. So uh, the race is only in two weeks. I really need to train to get myself to a better uh, condition for that. What else did I do? That's about all I've done on the bike since you've seen it last. Also, I was thinking um, maybe I should talk about the cost of all this. So the bike itself, I think I might have mentioned before, was 50, uh, 50 Swiss francs. It's about $50. I'm just going to say 50 bucks from now on because they're about the same. 
most of my viewers are in the US. So uh, about 50 bucks for the frame. The saddle is free, would be 18, you know, about 18 if you were to buy it new. This guy, I honestly don't remember how much it was. Let's just say about four or five bucks. Let's say another five for that. This, I think, was 13. Uh, cassette, I honestly don't remember what the cost of cost of that cassette is. Yeah, I'll, I'll flash something up on the screen. Uh, brake pads, again, they were eight for the front and back. Water bottle cage, I don't know, whatever it is. This uh, pump. You know, I, I can't really think of it off the top of my head. I'll come up with the summarization of the cost, but I think the whole cost, oh, probably the biggest cost other than the bike was also the tires. They were 15 bucks each, so it's 30 for the front and back. They were pretty cheap. They're not light. They're not especially, they're the wire beaded things, you know. They're nothing special here, 2.1 inch wide, uh, so nothing special at all with these. So, 150 bucks. I was thinking about this earlier today. If this is 150 bucks worth of bike, I think it's a really good bike for the money. Especially when you think about what you can buy new for that price. If you were to go to Walmart or something like that, and where else can you get a bike for 150 bucks new? What can you get for that compared to this? You know, I, okay, I'm not hating on Walmart bikes. You know I have another video series about my Walmart bike, so it's not that I hate Walmart bikes or anything, but, I mean, come on. When you look at what you get there compared to what you have here, this is a real bike that's going to last maybe another 25 years. In a few months, this will be a 25-year-old bike. And if you maintain it, it can last another 25 years. <laughs> Sorry, don't get mad at me, all the Walmart bike people. Um, but you know what I mean. Ah, okay, and then the one last thing. I noticed during my ride uh, yesterday, I could feel a tiny bit of movement in the headset. So I think the bearings need to be tightened a little bit. So that's what I'm going to do right now today. I'm going to go ahead and uh, repack and re... Uh, Tension, is that the right word? Re preload the bearings and lock them down, all that stuff. So let me get started on that right now. I noticed when taking out the bottom bearing is it is actually missing one of the ball bearings right there. I do have some extra bearings but I'm not sure if they're the same size. Let me check right now. I bought these some while ago for something. I think they look like they're the same size. Let's check. Today I've been using WD-40 as a degreaser. I don't think it's the best thing to use, not that it doesn't work, but it's kind of probably an expensive one, but I don't have anything else. Okay. Now it's pretty much, mostly at least, grease free. And it's still missing that bearing as you can see, obviously. So, so let's grab one out of this bag and see if it'll fit. Not really even sure how to do that. Hey, yep, it fits. Cool. Okay, so back to the bike, and let me get this bottom bearing in. This is going to be probably be really hard to see on camera, but I'm looking into the steer tube, and I can actually see rust on the inside of the frame tube, the top tube. Let me see if I can show you that. I'm actually using the uh, bike computer light, which is very bright as a flashlight. So hopefully I can show you what I'm talking about. It's very hard to see. There we go. There you go. There you go. That's about the best I can do. What do you think of that? 
Is that unusual? Is that bad? Is that just surface rust? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Is that something to worry about? Is there anything you can do about that? Okay, sorry I had to do some of that off camera. It was just a bunch of back and forth uh, adjustments and I think I finally got it about right. That's always something a little bit hard for me is getting that balance and usually I have to go back and do it a second time. Like after I ride I find there's like a little bit of movement or it's just a little too snug. Um, that's something I need to work on. Anyway, I think I'm about done for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm about to go ride on home and uh, if you want to see more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe. There's also a Facebook group in the link in the description. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.